Good afternoon, everyone. In the spirit of embracing Paramahansa Yogananda's worldwide spiritual family, I would also like to say Namaste. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Guten Tag. Bon après-midi. Buon pomeriggio. Boa tarde. Hudemeda. Konnichiwa. <laughs> May Divine Mother and our beloved Gurudev bless us all. We have a very beautiful and potentially life changing topic for this closing class of our convocation. Life changing not only for those for whom we pray, but for ourselves as well. Although I have prayed to God my entire life, ever since I was a very young girl, when I was asked to speak on this topic, prayer, embracing our world with compassion and understanding, Sri Gyana Mata's words, more and better, came to mind. I wanted to pray more, more often, and for more people, and for more situations. And I wanted to strive to be better at prayer, to pray with deeper concentration and greater love for all God's children. With these specific goals in mind, I embarked on a personal journey of discovery with prayer, what I've come to think of as my prayer journey. And today I would like to share with you some thoughts that I hope will motivate and encourage you to enrich your prayer life, to expand and deepen your own personal relationship with prayer. Embracing our world means holding mankind close to one's heart, not pulling back, rejecting, or judging, and not just intellectually accepting that we are all God's children, but experiencing that truth more and more in our hearts. Guruji tells us, learn to see God in all persons of whatever race or creed. You will know what divine love is when you begin to feel your oneness with every human being, not before. Rather than allowing ourselves to be distracted by superficial differences, such as race, creed, color, class, nationality, and so on, we are better served by concentrating on what we have in common. Gurudev explains, men of all nations are physically and spiritually one. Physically one because we are the descendants of common parents, the symbolic Adam and Eve. And spiritually one because we are the immortal children of our Father, bound by eternal links of brotherhood. All souls incarnate on earth for one purpose, to find God. And that, as you know, is an ever-evolving process of learning, growing, changing, and expanding our consciousness, tearing away the veils of maya over a period of lifetimes. But not many people know or even think about why they are here. Those of us who are aware of the purpose of life must continually make the effort to expand our consciousness striving to open our minds and fill our hearts with divine love for all, for those ignorant of why they've incarnated here on earth, as well as for those who are already striving to live a godly life. There is a God spark, a soul in every human being, and the potential for perfection lies within each one even though that may not always be evident in the way an individual behaves at a given time. Life is a struggle for joy 
all along the way. Those words of Master helped me during my prayer journey to increase my compassion and understanding for all God's children, my spiritual brothers and sisters. In their struggle for joy, many people look in the wrong place, thinking they will find it, for example, in wealth or power or mind-altering substances, thinking they can get away with breaking God's laws in an effort to achieve what they erroneously believe will bring them the happiness and fulfillment they're seeking. As we make an effort to foster our own spiritual growth and expand our consciousness, we become better able to feel for others in their struggle for joy. We see that situations are often not simply black or white. We become less judgmental and more able to reach out with true compassion and understanding. Guruji explains, when you realize that everyone is a miniature God, you have reverence for all, for you behold that it is God who is sleeping and suffering in each unawakened soul. How can you ignore him there? Your soul is seized by one thing, a heartfelt cry of compassion for the other person. Perhaps you've heard the story of a man who once stood before God, his heart breaking from the pain and injustice in the world. Dear God, he cried out, look at all the suffering, the anguish and distress in the world. Why don't you send help? God responded, I did send help. I sent you. <laughs> there is indeed much suffering, much darkness in this world of duality, including war, famine, poverty, disease, injustice. If we follow the news, we find ourselves continually bombarded with negativity. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, discouraged, or helpless when confronted with such tenacious, widespread problems. And the tendency can sometimes be to look away, to protect ourselves by not thinking about it. Or perhaps we feel there simply isn't anything we can do. But there is. Guruji assures us, live a godly life yourself, and everyone who crosses your path will be helped just by being with you. Live a godly life yourself. Praying for oneself and others is part of living a godly life. We are, in the best sense, our brother's keeper. Master very much encourages us to think of the well-being of others. He urges us, every morning when you begin your day, think not only of serving your own welfare, but of how many others you can help. Remember, God sent help. He sent you. Our beloved Sri Mrinalini Mata explained, The Lord is saying, I put you children here. You must be my instruments, my divine agents, to make this world a better place, to love and help one another. And we can all help by using the power of prayer to change our own lives, our own consciousness, along with the lives of others, those near and dear to us, as well as our larger world family. When you hear the word prayer, what comes to mind? What does prayer mean to you? I recently saw a little plaque inscribed with the words, prayer, the world's greatest wireless connection. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Prayer connects us instantly and intimately with our beloved God. 
Guruji describes prayer as talking to God in the language of your heart. So simple, so pure, no specific rules, nothing to memorize. In fact, words aren't even needed. It has been said that it is better in prayer to have a heart without words than words without a heart. And of course, we can have both. Our beloved Sri Dayamata used both words and her compassionate heart when she interceded with God on behalf of others. She explained that whenever she heard about the tragedies of war and other sufferings of humanity, she immediately talked it over with God as her near and dear friend. It was soul-stirring to be present when Ma prayed. She took prayer requests very seriously. When she received letters asking for her help through prayer, she would sometimes hold them to her heart or to her spiritual eye as she prayed with her whole being. And witnessing this, I couldn't help but feel that Divine Mother must surely hear and answer such pure, sincere, heartfelt prayer. I knew it was a very great blessing to be in Dayamata's presence when she was praying, and no doubt she felt the same way with Master. Guruji set the example for all of us, serving mankind, serving humanity through his prayers for world peace and for the physical, mental, and spiritual healing of others. When he later asked all of the SRF, YSS monks and nuns to join him in serving the world through prayer, that was the beginning of what is known as the Prayer Council. Master expressed great respect for the monks and nuns secluded in their monasteries all over the world who were devoting themselves to doing good through prayer and meditation. He explained, the powerful thought force that these humble monks and nuns silently set in motion by their lives of dedication to God alone does much to counterbalance the negative karma in this world where there is so much materialism, greed, and hatred. That is the power of concentrated devotional prayer. I remember when I first became a nun, my mother asked me, what do you do all day? Just sit around and meditate and pray? <laughs> Although we monks and nuns are perhaps not as cloistered as those Guruji mentioned, and we do carry a range of responsibilities in connection with his worldwide work, prayer is a vital part of the service each and every one of us in Master's ashrams offers to the world. In addition to praying during our private meditations and throughout the day, the prayer council deeply meditates and prays for others each morning and evening and performs Gurudev's healing technique, the same technique that you have all been practicing this week after your group meditations. Master often expressed a wish that the healing work of the prayer council be amplified by the prayers of members and friends in every land thereby creating a worldwide circle of prayer. Such a beautiful, unifying, caring idea, truly embracing the world through prayer. In Dayamata's letter, extending an invitation to join the worldwide prayer circle, she wrote, Your personal efforts at focusing the power of prayer, the unlimited power of God within each of us can do much to bring greater harmony among the troubled nations of the world. This is a timely message, and I'd like to repeat Ma's words. Your personal efforts at focusing the power of prayer, the unlimited power of God, within each of us can do much to bring greater harmony among the troubled nations of this world. 
Whether we live in an ashram or in the world, we can learn to harness that powerful thought force to bring about positive, beneficial changes. God used thought to create everything that exists. It is the most potent force in the world. As Guruji explained, man's wrong thoughts and resultant actions can cause earthquakes, floods, and other disasters. So just think of the good we can bring about with strong, positive, right thoughts. In order for our prayers to be effective, we must believe in the possibility of what we are praying for. And we must persevere in our efforts. We can't just pray half-heartedly thinking, what's the point, the situation is useless, is hopeless, and expect our prayers to be answered. Saint Monica, the mother of Saint Augustine, persisted for many years in praying for both her husband and her son, despite the fact that neither of them showed any inclination to mend their ways. Her husband was an older pagan man with a violent temper. She prayed diligently for his conversion for 30 years and finally had the joy of seeing it come about just one year before his death. Her son, Augustine, had been raised as a Christian, but he became ensnared in worldly vices and refused to be convinced of his errors. However, after 17 years of tireless prayer for her wayward son, he reformed himself and is now considered one of the most important church fathers in Western Christianity. To this day, St. Monica is especially revered by mothers because of her determined prayers for her son. She utilized her willpower, which is an essential element in prayer. Once she began praying, there was never any question in her motherly heart or mind of giving up. Guruji explains, continuous, calm, powerful use of the will shakes the forces of creation and brings a response from the infinite. St. Monica's answered prayers were a blessing not only for her son, but also for countless sons and daughters through the centuries who have been inspired by St. Augustine's transformation to make an effort to change their own lives. We need to guard against allowing ourselves to fall prey to discouragement when a situation seems hopeless. Diamata pointed out that God expects man to use his God-given power, will, and strength to resist all imperfection in the world of change and relativity. And she reminded us, every uplifting thought we think Every prayer we utter, every good action we perform is impregnated with God's power. We must all do our part to resist evil and keep our thoughts positive. We are kshatriyas, spiritual warriors, and we can do much to battle the darkness, the evil in this world of duality by using the powerful, God-given spiritual weapons of thought force, will, and love. Rinalini Mata once wrote this to a devotee. We influence our environment as well as accept influence from it. The existence on earth of every individual man or woman who is seeking to live by the will of God is very significant and plays no small part in what occurs to his or her family, community, country, and world. Sometimes it can seem as if the world is spinning helplessly out of control. 
And that's why it's important to keep in mind, as Sri Yukteswar explained in the Holy Science, that the world is actually in an upward cycle. How blessed we are to know that. It gives us hope for the future. And we can build on that hope, that reality, that truth, and do our part to actively counteract negative messages coming from the world by focusing more on positive thoughts. For example, ponder this thought from Guruji. Most men consider the course of events as natural and inevitable. They little know what radical changes are possible through prayer. Radical changes through prayer can come about on the world stage and also in our personal lives. As we've seen in the case of St. Monica's answered prayers for St. Augustine. Now, if any of you out there are thinking about the monastic life, this message is especially for you. I'm going to take this opportunity to share how prayer helped me to make what could be considered a radical change from being a householder devotee to becoming a nun. As I contemplated this possibility, I fervently, frequently, and candidly talked to God and Guru, asking them very directly to let me know if they really wanted me to become a nun. Although I felt Guruji was calling me, I also felt a need for reassurance that I should actually take that next step and pursue monastic life. You know, Satan doesn't like monastic vocations and will do his best to try to derail them. But with God and Guru's grace, my sincere, heartfelt, and persistent prayers were heard and answered. One of my resolutions for this year has been to pray that more young devotees will listen to the Guru's call to become monks and nuns. Guruji's worldwide work needs you. <laughs> If you think you hear him calling, don't be afraid to answer. Pray about it. When I took that next step and contacted the Nuns Ashram Admissions Council, I didn't know if I'd be accepted, but I knew I had to pursue the possibility. And it was the best decision I made in my life. Okay, that's the end of my monastic life promotional. <laughs> But remember, I will be praying. <laughs> Dag Hammarskjöld, who played in a prominent role on the world stage as Secretary General of the United Nations, truly understood the power of prayer. In 1957, at the dedication of the meditation room at the United Nations headquarters, he spoke these potent words that still resonate today, 60 years later. Man has reached a critical point in history where he must turn to God to avoid the consequences of his own faulty thinking. We must pray, not a few of us, but all of us. We must pray simply, fervently, sincerely, and with increasing power as our faith grows. We must condition the world's leaders by asking God's Spirit to descend upon their hearts and minds. We must condition ourselves, each and every one, by asking God's help in living so that peace may be possible. We must pray in church, at home, on the train, while driving, on the job, and keep at it. Each of us is important now. The ability of every individual to seek divine help is a necessary link in the golden chain of harmony and peace. Prayer is a dynamic manifestation of love by the concerned, reaching out for God's help for man. 
You can help change the world by your prayers and your prayerful action. Remember, God sent help. He sent you. <laughs> Doug Hammarskjöld so beautifully described prayer as a dynamic manifestation of love. It's true that love, divine love for all mankind, is what enables one to embrace the world with compassion and understanding, as Daya Mata demonstrated so beautifully in her life. In Ma, we experienced an embodiment of Divine Mother's love. Whenever I was in her presence, including when she was praying, I felt I was witnessing love in action. And this deeply inspired me. For as long as I can remember, love has been the most important element in my life. One day, I spontaneously confessed to Ma that I wanted to be able to live love, as she did. I will never forget her response. Looking at me so sweetly, she simply said, "Pray for it." It will come. I knew these weren't mere words, and I knew her message was not meant for me alone, and that's why I'm sharing it with all of you. Her words and the feeling behind them conveyed her absolute conviction, based on her personal experience, that positive change could be brought about through the power of prayer. Pray for it; it will come. Those words sang in my heart, and they still do. They inspired me to compose a prayer to Master, asking him to help me live love each day. Ever since that time when Ma spoke those precious, encouraging words, "Pray for it; it will come." I've gone to my altar first thing every morning and offered my personal prayer. In observing Daya Mata, I could see clearly that living love requires compassion and understanding, qualities that help us to more fully walk a mile in another's moccasins. Most of us probably grew up hearing sayings such as, "There, but for the grace of God, go I. Judge not, lest you be judged. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. Do unto others what you would have them." Do unto you. This wisdom has been passed down from generation to generation, but because these sayings are so familiar to us, the danger is that we can think we know all about them.、And、that's why we need to examine our own hearts to see if we're actually putting them into daily practice. For instance, when we hear that someone has committed an obvious wrong. Do we think judgmentally? Oh my God, that person's karma is going to catch up with them. <laughs> Or do we feel compassionately? Oh my God, that person's karma is going to catch up with them. Please help him, Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "O、oh、Arjuna, the best type of yogi is he who feels for others, even." As he feels for himself. Many years ago, I heard a story of a woman who was very badly injured in a car accident, and she must have been having an out-of-body experience because she could clearly hear the thoughts of others as they passed by the accident site. First, she picked up the thought of one man who was greatly annoyed at being delayed. His only thought was of how the accident affected him, and he was very irritated that he would be late for work and miss an important meeting. Then a woman passed by, and prayed with deep feeling and empathy. Her only thought was for the one who had experienced such a terrible accident, and she asked God to bless, and comfort, and strengthen her. And indeed, the woman whose badly injured body was trapped in her car 
felt embraced by such compassionate caring, and she was comforted. Her recovery took a long time, but the impact of the woman driver's sympathetic prayers stayed with her. Amazingly, she'd been able to memorize and later recall the woman driver's license plate number and made the effort to locate her so she could let her know what a difference her compassionate prayers had made. I've kept this little story in mind through the years, and whenever I see an accident or hear a siren, I immediately pray, both for those in need and for those who are helping. And I encourage you to do the same. Remember, God sent help. He sent you. You may not be a rescue worker on the physical plane, but you can all come to the rescue on the spiritual plane. In the Bible, St. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. Most people think, how is this possible? Well, as we know, we don't have to be sitting in front of our altar to pray. We can practice the presence of God, talking with Him throughout the day, whether walking in nature or driving in traffic. In fact, something that we do in the ashram that you may want to do as well is to pray before driving anywhere. Whenever we get in the car, we sit quietly for a few moments and pray either silently or out loud, asking God to take us safely to our destination. And here's another idea. When we see someone driving dangerously, which seems to happen so often, instead of just reacting with annoyance, we can use it as an opportunity to pray to God, asking for His protection, both for ourselves and for others. Guruji tells us, every little moment you spend with God will be spent to your best advantage. The more we talk to God throughout the day as we would to our very best friend, the deeper the relationship becomes. There's no need for formality. Whenever joy comes, share it with God. Whenever sorrow comes, share it with God. Whenever worries about the world come, talk it over with God. Ask Him to help you counteract negativity by sending positive thoughts into the world. We can form the habit of thanking God for every little blessing, including kindnesses and courtesies extended by others. And we can also, as Master so sweetly urges us to do, pray when we see sad faces. Remembering Guruji's words, life is a struggle for joy all along the way, helps us to pray with genuine caring for others, as St. Francis of Assisi demonstrated in his life. His way of embracing the world with compassion and understanding is expressed so beautifully in what has become known as the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. In order to be able to fully open one's heart to all God's children, as St. Francis did, to become a pure channel for God's love to express in this world, we must pray for our own spiritual growth, for the expansion of our consciousness. Guruji explains, if you contact God within yourself, you will know that He is in everyone. Some people say they do not feel right about praying for themselves, 
As far as material things go, we can demonstrate all surrendering love for God by praying, Lord, Thou dost anticipate my every need. Sustain me according to Thy will. But that doesn't mean we can't actively pray for our own self-realization, asking for God's help in living a godly life and spiritualizing our consciousness. Guruji tells us, only spiritual consciousness, realization of God's presence in oneself and in every other living being, can save the world. I see no chance for peace without it. Begin with yourself. There is no time to waste. It is your duty to do your part to bring God's kingdom on earth. Let me repeat that. Only spiritual consciousness, realization of God's presence in oneself and in every other living being, can save the world. I see no chance for peace without it. Begin with yourself. There is no time to waste. It is your duty to do your part to bring God's kingdom on earth. Remember, God sent help. He sent you. We may not have influential outer roles on the world stage or the financial means to help stamp out disease worldwide, but as men and women of God, each one of us can have a positive influence and greatly benefit the world through the spiritual means of prayer. The Catholic mystic Thomas Merton wrote, If you want a life of prayer, the way to get it is by praying. <laughs> and that includes praying for ourselves as well as praying for others. I have a recent story to share about answered prayers, but first I want to give a little introduction. I frequently use Master's affirmation, I relax and cast aside all mental burdens, allowing God to express through me His perfect love, peace, and wisdom. In fact, I even learned to say this in Japanese because I wanted to use it in a retreat I led in Japan last year. And sometimes I change the affirmation into a prayer, which gives me a close feeling of connection, of speaking personally to God. I'll pray, Divine Mother, help me to relax and cast aside all mental burdens, allowing you to express through me your perfect love, peace, and wisdom. Likewise, I'll sometimes take a thought of Master that inspires me, such as, it is so wonderful to be in tune with God and to trust in Him implicitly, and I'll turn that into a prayer. Beloved God, help me to be in tune with you and to trust in you implicitly. Now, these have been two of my very favorite prayers for a number of years. Now to the story. A few weeks ago, when I was working with Marinalini Mata, I told her I'd been praying to Divine Mother and Master, asking for their help in preparing for this talk. I explained that for several months I'd been writing down lots of thoughts that came to me as my prayer journey unfolded, but I couldn't seem to get them in order. Marie Lady Ma just smiled and proceeded to give me a mini satsang, the essence of which was to just relax and trust. Marie Ma had recently viewed the YSS Diamond Jubilee video that you all had an opportunity to see this week, and it brought back fond memories of her many trips to India. To put things in perspective for me, she proceeded to tell me stories of how she was called upon to give satsang without any preparation, sometimes more than once a day. Her pep talk had a profound effect on me. I felt as if she had 
waved a magic wand over me, and I have no doubt that my prayers to God and Guru in connection with this talk were answered through her. After receiving Rilini Ma's guidance and doing my best to implement it, the notes I'd been compiling and wrestling with almost magically started rearranging themselves into order. Her wise counsel to relax and trust was the perfect tailor-made answer for me from Divine Mother and Guruji. After all, this is what I've been praying about for years in two separate prayers, and she just very helpfully linked them together. Since then, my watchwords have become relax and trust. But this guidance certainly has a much wider application than public speaking. Relax and trust is good advice for life in general, and more specifically for prayer. We need to relax and do our part, which includes embracing our world through prayer, and trust that God is doing His part in unfolding His beautiful divine plan for each individual soul as well as for the world. During my prayer journey these last few months, I've used this prayer of Master as a compass to guide me. O Spirit, teach me to pray with deep concentration and to imbue scientific meditation with devotion. May my heart daily become more pure by all surrendering love for Thee. This prayer contains several distinct but related components, the first of which is concentration. Concentration is a key element in prayer. Guruji advises us to be practical and earnest about prayer and to concentrate deeply on what we are praying. We can't be absent-minded and expect God to take our prayers seriously. We must learn to pray with deep concentration. And yet it is so easy to slip into bad habits, as Master observed when he commented, when most people want to pray, they think instead of sleep, And when the head nods, they dive into bed, and that is the end of prayer. But when we are praying for something or someone we care very deeply about, we don't fall asleep. Most of us have probably had an experience of praying fervently for someone at some time in our lives. And recalling that feeling of deep caring, of being completely immersed in prayer, and experiencing an intimate connection with God can help us strengthen our concentration during our prayers each day. Recently, when I was out walking, I observed a blind woman with her service dog walking a short distance ahead. A squirrel suddenly darted across the road directly in front of him, but the dog completely ignored the squirrel. He just kept walking steadily at the woman's side at the same pace, tail wagging slightly, giving absolutely no indication that he had even seen the squirrel. He was very much on duty, completely attentive to his human and not about to allow himself to be distracted. If a dog can be trained... If a dog can be trained to overcome its natural instinct to chase a squirrel, surely we can train our minds to refuse to chase distracting thoughts during prayer and meditation. And for goodness sake, give yourself a fighting chance and turn off your cell phone while you're praying and meditating. Guruji taught that before praying, it's good to meditate, to gain awareness that we are made in the image of God. And this brings us to the second part of Master's prayer, to imbue scientific meditation with devotion. This week, you've had the blessed opportunity to 
review the scientific meditation techniques that Master has given us, and to meditate and chant with other God-seeking devotees without cell phones. When you return to your homes, along with a renewed determination to practice these liberating techniques deeply and regularly, also strive to imbue, to saturate your meditation with devotion, with ever-expanding love for God. And don't allow yourself to feel discouraged should you experience dry spells from time to time. Everyone goes through that. Early one morning, I was walking in a park and stood for a while in front of a rocky cliff. I knew from having been there before that this was the site of a man-made waterfall. But at the moment, there was no indication that a lovely waterfall was about to manifest. The rocks were dry. There was just a little pool of water at the foot of the cliff. Then I heard a distant sound, soft at first and then gradually growing louder, and suddenly water started to trickle over the edge of the cliff. And that trickle continued to increase until a large stream of water was cascading over the cliff, splashing into the pool below. And this experience made me think of the devotion that is inherent to our souls, just waiting to express itself, even when we may not have any indication that it's there. When one of the monks shared with Dayamata that he was going through a dry period, she advised, well, if you don't feel devotion, pray for it until you do feel it. It's that important. When our hearts feel dry, we can pray to Divine Mother, asking her to open the floodgates of our hearts, allowing devotion to flow freely. Remember Dayamata's promise, pray for it, it will come. This brings us to the last portion of Guruji's prayer, may my heart daily become more pure by all surrendering love for thee. What does it mean to have a pure heart? And why do we want to pray for it? Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And Guruji put it this way, Purity of the heart gives one the contact of God. But what is a pure heart? Sri Yukteswar explained that there are five evolutionary states of the human heart, ranging from dark to clean. Dark is the lowest state in which man's thinking is so completely clouded by ignorance that he cannot conceive of anything higher than material creation. Clean or pure is the highest state of the heart in which man becomes unified with God. That is the state we are all striving to reach, and prayer, along with all surrendering love for God, can help us. Attaining purity of heart is an ongoing, daily process of becoming more and more absorbed in God until we begin to truly see God in ourselves and in others. When out of our all-surrendering love for Him, we want only to please Him in every way, every day. We know that we are moving closer to Him until my will and thy will merge into only thy will be done through me, Lord. And as we strive to purify our hearts each day, we become better able to embrace the world through prayer, with compassion, and understanding. Each one of us can and must harness the power of prayer to both change ourselves and bring about positive changes in the world around us. Guruji explains, each one of us has a responsibility to bring peace and happiness to our country and to all men. One should care 
not only for his own nation, but all countries. Not only for one's own family, but for all mankind. The ordinary man, man's interest, is limited to himself and his surroundings. But the man of God identifies with the whole world. Don't think the contribution made by your spiritualized consciousness is small. Your part may mean very much. Remember, God sent help. He sent you. As we open our hearts more and more to God, our growing love for Him spills over into love for all His children. Our brothers and sisters struggling for joy, suffering through war, famine, disease, imprisonment. May we each find it in our own heart to pray, as Master did, O Lord of compassion, teach me to shed tears of love for all beings. May I behold them as my very own, different expressions of myself. Let us now spend a few moments together in silent prayer for our world, and then we will conclude by practicing Guruji's healing technique. Please stand. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art art in all Thy children. children. Manifest Thy healing presence presence in in their bodies. Heavenly Father, Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art art in all Thy children. children. Manifest Thy healing presence presence. in their minds. minds. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father, Thou art omnipresent. Thou art art in all Thy children. children. Manifest Thy healing presence in their souls. Of our hearts, let us chant Om 
sending healing vibrations of peace and harmony to all the world. Let us pray together. O Spirit, Spirit, teach me to pray pray. with deep concentration concentration. and to imbue scientific meditation meditation. with devotion. devotion. May my heart heart daily daily become more pure by all surrendering love for Thee. Om Shanti Shanti Amen Guru Dave said, The world will change when the hearts of individuals change. Please pray for our world and the individuals in it. Remember, God sent help. He sent you.